Okay, welcome to another week of Eagles football. Uh, this week, I think it's, I, I forget what week it is. It's either week 9 or 10, uh, playing against the Dallas Cowboys. But first comes first, uh, we want to first say thank you to all the veterans. Veterans Day today. Um, it's, what, November 11th this year. If you see the picture in the front of the video, it's actually of the Veterans Day two years ago where the Eagles played the Colts, and that's where actually I was featured on the ticket. Uh, the Eagles actually treated me and my family very well during that day. Uh, it was my daughter's first football game, and we were on the field, led the whole stadium the fight song. It was really, really great. Uh, one of my favorite moments uh, being featured on every one of the tickets and all that stuff um, was being on the Eagle in the middle of the field, leading the entire stadium in the fight song. But later on, I was in section, I want to say 202. Um, actually, that's where that, this poster came from, section 202. And one by one, this people recognized I was the guy on the ticket. And the whole side of the whole stadium started busting out this USA chant um, in support of our military uh, members. So I know we talk about football on this, but first comes first, which is way more important. Uh, the people are out there fighting for our freedoms to even play and watch football. So you football players that might be watching this too, remember that. Uh, football is a game. The military and the sacrifices people make for you is not a game. So people give up their lives uh, for you to have the opportunity to make your millions and run a football down the field. So play with heart. I'm not trying to downplay you guys, but understand where the priorities are. So thank you to all you uh, military members that make things possible here in America. And like I said before, I'm one of them. And I'm, I'm proud to serve my country. Got my American flag up here. Good. Now, on to... My suck Eagles right now. They just stink. I'm trying to give you the benefit of the doubt uh, when playing the New Orleans Saints. I did my over and under last week, and I tried to be as positive as I could be, knowing that we're going to play the worst defense in the league. Uh, it was just highly frustrating watching that game, especially I don't know what in the world went in the fourth quarter, where it seemed like we were running out the time on ourselves. Uh, it didn't look like we had the urgency like I've seen in other teams where you know you need two scores and you need to make that happen. It just didn't look like we were up to it. And we're going to go through, I mean, look at some of the things. I mean, you know, I was wrong on pretty much everything that I said over and under. And some of the, some of the stats were just ridiculous. You know, they sacked McNabb back in 07 three times. You know, and I tried to give... Our offense line benefit of doubt to the ball and stuff. They sacked us seven times. That was, I mean, seriously. Uh, fumbles, I mean, who thought Selleck fumble? I knew we had an interception in this, but man, an interception on the goal line again, return for 99 yards. Ugh. Ugh. I mean, I can go on and on and on. I'm not going to because that's just depressing and I don't want to kill myself today. So. That brings us to Dallas Week. Now, I'll, I'll touch on Dallas Week for a second for this week, but I can't forever because, whew, This week, Dallas Week, we're both three and five, right? This part stinks, because normally when you play Dallas, there's, there's something riding on it. Normally there's also some pride riding on it too. Uh, Romo just stinks. Every year they, prom they promote this guy like he's in the Tom Brady, Peyton Manning, Drew Brees kind of echelon Aaron Rodgers. The guy stinks, right? That being said, he's playing the Eagles today, and our defense sucks. So I can't even say anything good about that. What we need to do, what we need to not do, who knows, dude. Like, what's kind of depressing about today is normally when we played Dallas, I mean, I remember in the 90s when we used to play them, and we knew they had a tough team. They had a good team. No, they won three Super Bowls in the beginning of, of the 90s. But when they were coming into Philadelphia, we had a tough defense. And at the very least, we knew our defense was going to give them hell. Right? Uh, we're, we weren't going to give them any games, and we were going to uh, fight the whole way through. And you could see it, and our team did not like their team. Like, I guess what's also a little frustrating, I know there's going to be get some gamesmanship and stuff, but... It doesn't seem like the current Eagles are tough. It, I'm going to call them just the way I see it. It doesn't seem like they're tough. It doesn't seem like they're taking these losses seriously. Um, I see a little bit too much smiling and joking around on a losing bench. And uh, that just frustrates me as an Eagles fan. And, you know, of course, at the end of the game, you know, 
as soon as the whistle blows, you see them slapping, high five, talking to each other, joking around with the other team, and uh, it, it gets me the feeling that you really don't care. You're there for a paycheck, so it it, it really frustrates me. We got blown out last week. We had one touchdown. It was a DJAC, like I was telling you, DJAC was going to blow up with some 77 yard touchdown on a blown coverage. But outside of that, we scored six points. And the other one, the other three points, was on a turnover deep in their zone, and we couldn't move the ball. So we kicked a field goal. So, really, a real drive, we had one drive, three points. Worst defense in the league, and we score 13 points on just, ugh. So to try to play over and under on today is ridiculous. I don't even want to go into it because I don't want to be super negative about things. Um, but I'm just going to leave that alone. That being said, Dallas week, this week has been horrible for me because Nomad can talk a little trash and be like, oh, you thousand. I don't have any faith in this, in this team right now to have any kind of urgency and really give a crap about it. So I pretty much strictly have to think about history. Uh, Eagles Cowboys history and what I take out of uh, my Eagles Cowboys rivalry and maybe today we do something great or I just wait until we have that, uh, that great rivalry in the future again and I can get a little more hyped up because uh, I like beating the crap out of the Cowboys if nothing else to make sure they don't make the playoffs either so some of the history things I think about I think about oh, one of my favorite games of all time was the 44 to 6 game where we needed a win. We needed all sorts of weird stuff to happen. We needed like Oakland to win and Tampa to win or some weird combination of teams to win for us even to give it a shot into the playoffs. All that happened, we were the late game and then we were playing Dallas and whoever won that game would get into the playoffs. And absolutely everything went right, even to the point where the guy was running into the end zone and Brian Dawkins hit him and a silly old Hansen. Runs the, the fumble back for a touchdown while doing the Dion dance starting at like the 15 yard line. I blew up. I remember exactly where I was. I was actually in a, uh, a place trying to eat a cheesesteak in California. Bad idea. And I was watching the Eagles game and I pretty much think the workers there thought I was nuts because I was, I lost my mind. I was just so happy. So the 44 6 game was awesome. Uh, who can forget the fourth and one? Barry Switzer. I, ugh, between him and Michael Irving, two of my most hated Dallas whatever people of all time, uh, calling a one play on fourth and one, them saying they call a timeout, had the, and he ran it again. This thing, an arrogant fill in the blank, we're on the play again, and we stopped him again. That's in Philly, so we protected our house. They went on, I think, to win the Super Bowl, but we won that day. So whatever, they don't beat us in our house. That's good. Uh, I actually took my granddad to the game uh, where Michael Irvin's career ended. And there's all oh, the boomers. Yeah, I booed too, because I don't like that guy. I think he's just, whatever. I didn't like him as a player, and I just, whatever. So yeah, uh, in the end, do I realize it's not good to boo somebody's real personal injury? I get that, but at the time, I was in high school, I think, and I just don't like the Cowboys, so. There's other players on the Cowboys that I'll at least respect as a player. You know, Troy Aikman and Emmett Smith, but Mark Levering here, on my all-time hated Cowboys list. So, uh, we've had a couple other good games. NFC Championship game, 1980. Uh, the Eagles win 20-7. Wilbur Montgomery with that big touchdown run. I think it was like 60-something yards. Uh, great history there. Reason why, if you never understand, if you're somebody else watching this video, uh, rooting for another team, or you never really fully understand Eagles fans' true hate for the Cowboys, it comes from this. So, the Eagles got into the, the league way before the Cowboys. We got in the league like 33, 1933. The Cowboys, I think either in the 60s, I think in the 60s. Whatever. Do more research later. So, the Eagles have been in the league longer. We have three NFL championships, but the Dallas Cowboys have five Super Bowl trophies. In that time, the Cowboys have been deemed America's team. Even though I've never voted for them, never will. Uh, I'd rather root for my own turd than root for anything on the Cowboys. Um, and they have this persona, whatever. I mean, yeah, the cheerleaders are better looking than ours, I'll admit that. But outside of that, uh, 
they get deemed America's team, they walk around, you know, we're better than everybody else. And for a couple of years, I'll be honest, they were, because they won the Super Bowl, so that's how you prove it. But then they had this period of time, I think it was in the 90s, where if they won, they were supposed to win. If they lost, it's because of what they didn't do, not but what the other team did. And they would say things and their attitude and their adjustment. But not just that. You have this weird dynamic here in Philadelphia where you have a bunch of diehard Philadelphia fans. Then you have these, I don't even know what to call them. They call them cockroaches or whatever, and, uh, on like WIP or whatever. But you have these people that root for the Cowboys that are from Philadelphia. And out of all the NFC East teams, even when Arizona's in, the, the closest team to Philadelphia is like the Giants of Washington. So if you were at a transplant, or, or try to root for somebody else, root for somebody else local-ish, and somebody that you have a better chance of watching on TV, well, they'll pick the Cowboys just because they won five Super Bowls. They, they have all these corny, oh, I've been watching since the kids. Everybody's got their excuses, which don't fly with me. Um, you know, I got my one buddy. Yeah, I'm going to call you out on video. Says, oh, you know, when I was little and I played PB football or whatever, and then we were the Cowboys, so I just followed the Cowboys, and I, you know, and so I just followed. Hey, you're lame, dude, and you know who I'm talking about. So all you lame Philadelphia Cowboys fans, and I can't blame anybody that's from Texas and he's a Cowboys fan because I'm from Philly, I'm a Philadelphia fan. But if you're from Philadelphia and you're a Cowboys fan, you're lame. If you're from the Philadelphia area or New York or Jersey or D.C. area and you're a Cowboys fan, you're lame. So just look in the mirror, say, I'm lame because I'm a Cowboys fan. Um, but also, there's a little hate, too. Just like everybody else in the NFC, we've watched everybody else in the NFC East win multiple Super Bowls. Now it's just four teams. When Arizona was there, we're still like, at least we might win it before them. And they almost won a Super Bowl before us. But we've watched Washington, the Giants, and the Cowboys win multiple Super Bowls. And I think the Giants are now up to, like, four. The Cowboys are at five, and I think Washington's at three. I would say that's frustrating because the Eagles are so close so many years. We've dominated the NFC East in the 2000 era, uh, and we just can't get it done. And we get reminded about that on a regular basis, especially by those Cowboy fans that are from Philadelphia area that will throw in the whole five rings things in our face. Um, this year is a little frustrating for us as well because it doesn't look like we have a defense to punch them in the mouth. At the very least, like, I'd want to see a rumble or something. we got to win something. It was kind of depressing at the end of the Atlanta game where Tony Gonzalez pretty much told Trent Cole, hey, look up at the scoreboard. I'm going to go home with a win. Uh, you go ahead with your loss and whatever. Bye-bye. Same, same thing. It's just frustrating. So, learning your history. Uh, Eagles-Cowboys normally is pretty big. And... I would hope for it to be big again. Pretty much a loser of today is just about out of the playoffs, even though the NFC East right now stinks. The Giants are at 6-3. We're pretty much handing the season to you, Giants, so good luck in the playoffs unless you really tank it. Um, if we win today and the Giants lose, then we're a little bit back into it, but you know what? We can't even worry about other teams right now because our team stinks. We have to win something uh, to even start thinking about talking about anything. On a positive note, though, you still... Even though it's really, really frustrating, I know it's frustrating, you still can't give up on the Eagles, right? I remember when the Eagles were 5-5-1, five, five and one. we just benched McNabb during the Baltimore game, and people were like, oh, they're done, they're done. It's like, you, can't, you still can't give them one yet. It's almost like that game when we had against the Giants, and we scored how many points and how many minutes. Sometimes the Eagles play their best with the backs on the wall, and right now our backs are on the wall. We were 5-5-1 five, five, that season. Next thing you know, we're in the NFC Championship game against Arizona, and we're winning the game. I think it was 25-24 at that time, before the defense gave it up. Uh, so anything can happen, and I truly believe that. And like I said before, I want the Eagles to win. I'm never going to root against the Eagles, but you're just making it so hard. So <sighs> today, let's try to be as good Eagles fans. It's a very dangerous place to be down in, at the link when the Eagles fans are pissed off, not just because Dallas is here, but because our team is not doing what it needs to do. Jeff Lee, Jeffrey Lurie, I'm kind of wondering what you're going to do if you say it needs not acceptable. We're getting really close to that right now. I'm looking to see what and what you're going to do to back up your words, because if you bring back what doesn't work, then what you say really doesn't mean anything. So I'm looking to that. Before that happens, I'm looking to see Eagles fans. 
What coach do you want? Now, there's some popular names going out there, but do you really want John Gruden or do you really want Bill Cowher? I don't know. John Gruden won a Super Bowl with somebody else's team, with Tony Dungy, and Bill Cowher took him 14 seasons to win a Super Bowl with Pittsburgh. So those two names right there, I don't know. Do you want an older coach, uh, somebody that's proven that they can win, like a Jimmy Johnson or something that's still out there, or do you want to go with what's starting to happen with the league and hire somebody younger, maybe from the college level, and have them just change the team. I think we're kind of leaning towards that. I'm leaning towards that. If you were to pick an older coach, who would you pick? If you were to pick a college coach, who would you pick? Or hey, way out in the left field, put your comments down on the YouTube, whatever thing down here. Let's start seeing who in the world we want as coach. Not giving up on Andy Reid yet, because he has won a lot of games. He has. But if we were to start looking, who are we going to start looking at? And I'm interested to see what your comments are. And just refocusing on today, I want to see a good game. I want to see the Eagles blow it up. And if you're going to pick any day to regain your fans back and get them back into your corner, it's today. You're playing the Dallas Cowboys. We hate the Dallas Cowboys. You can get a lot of the publicity away from you this week if you just go ahead and beat the living crap of the Dallas Cowboys. Hey, if nothing else, you give them a flying kick to the neck, you'll get some, <laughs> at least some fight points from the people you work for, which is the Philadelphia fans, you don't work for all those other people, NFL Network and all that crap. You work for the Philadelphia fans because flat out, kind of like what I said last week, I'm not buying any more merchandise or, or buying any tickets or buying your mess if you're staking like this. That pays your salary. So the less money you see going into your stance, if that's how you play, then that's how you play. That's money I spend on helmets and blankets and towels. And this stuff here, which I didn't even turn on, which I should have because that's my weekly thing. The less money you spend on that, the less money that goes in your pocket, the less money that you can argue with the owners to get to pay for all your cars and houses and all that mess. The reality is you get paid a lot of money anyway to play a game. So if you want to make money, put some, something good on the field. If you want to feel good about what you're doing, put some pride in what you do and put some fight in what you do and actually fight for this city that gets pretty pissed when you miss, miss the mark. Dallas week is a perfect week to turn it on. Beat the crap out of them today, please. Don't let go of the pedal. Just keep your foot on the pedal, beat the little crap out of them. Keep coming. I don't care until the clock reads zero, score as much as you run up the score, just beat the crap out of them. That's the easiest way for you to solve a lot of problems that are going on today. Or have half effort and just get the hate worse. Got some funny stories for you next week or just funny ideas, but this week I'm not even doing over and under. Just beat the crap out of them. Keep on wearing your old stuff. It's not working, but it's just fun. I got a lot of cool comments with this. And in the end, just go birds. Beat the crap out of Dallas, all right? Ah! Bye, Eagles, bye. On the road to